So the coronavirus has had uh, an impact on soccer globally. Um, but how is your team dealing with the, uh, the coronavirus? So in this video, I'm going to talk about uh, the different things that coaches and teams can do um, to actually, you know, not stay dormant during uh, this, this pandemic and, and keep working. Um, as a coach, um, you have a few options uh, regarding your team um, in, in such situations, right? So the, what I'll start doing is I'll start listing uh, what can be done and what impact it will have on, on the player and, and on the coach uh, as well, right? So um, you have uh, the impact on the player and then we'll have the impact on the coach. Right. So the first thing that obviously everybody can do is do nothing. Right. No practices. No talking to your um, to your team, and and the team may not even be able to uh, talk to each other as well. So complete radio silence in your team. Now doing nothing means that uh, your players um, are completely dormant and they don't get the exercise, they may not be in the right shape. Um, and for the coach as well, mentally, it may not be the right thing because you want to be in constant communication with your players and you want to make sure that you're discussing things like uh, tactical planning or you're discussing drills or just making sure that you know the players are keep themselves sharp right so doing nothing in in these situations is not really advisable right so it's not good for the player and it's definitely not good for the coach as well the second option that we have is uh, skill exercises so you can actually circulate emails and you can actually make sure that uh, your players are participating or doing skill exercises and maybe you can share a few videos amongst the team so skill exercise now if, if you do this it's going to keep your players active it's going to be really good for the players themselves uh, it'll boost team morale it may increase a bit of competition on you know who's doing the keepy uppies more than than the other guy so you know it's it, it's good for boys and girls to actually make sure that they, they they stay fit and and they're challenging each other and they're challenging themselves uh it can be done indoor outdoor so you don't have that restriction you can do it in your backyard as well right? so it's, it's really good for the player for the coach i would say not so much right you're as a coach you're just facilitating um some um some some activity here but you're not really developing or growing or learning as a coach right obviously um, so so it's just good for the player but not that good for the coach the next uh, option obviously is tactical planning right so you could actually get into a video conference with your players and you can talk about tactics you can talk about um, you know how, how would you play in a 4-3-3 and maybe discuss a different type of formation discuss about positional play in, in different kinds of uh, situations so tactical now tactical planning is really good for the coach because you are constantly working on your system you're working on what you specifically want to work on in drills so you're planning your drill based on what tactics you want to use and you're adapting your tactics so coaches dream about this kind of a situation sometimes where you have downtime you're not focusing on a specific game and you can just think about your 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 tactical planning right so it's good for the coach definitely you're you're mentally working your mind um, on your tactics but for the players i would say not so much right players need to play players need to be told run here and that they want to run with the ball they need to be physically active with the ball uh, the tactical part is good for them but majority of the kids want to have fun they want to play right so in, in this kind of a situation with a pandemic around us maybe not be a, maybe not the best thing uh, for for the players and the last option is virtual team building right so i i call it virtual team building but it's, it's much more than that
Now, in virtual team building, um, what I propose, and, and this is something that um, you'll see is, is good for the players and good for the coach. Um, so a lot of the times we're, we're thinking in isolation about, about these topics, but what, what, what I'm proposing with virtual team building is we, we as coaches make sure we're constantly in touch with the players and we as coaches make sure the players are constantly in touch with each other. So bringing in elements from the skill exercises and bringing in elements from the tactical planning to the virtual team building, right? So what this means is you would actually start making sure, start to make sure that there's there's constant communication with your team, right? So once a week, you'll, you'll do a, a conference call and every person in your group has to submit a video of them doing keepy uppies, right? Or them doing a specific small little drill that they can do in their backyard or in their house. And you know, you see how different kids have, have done it differently, right? You can see how their skills are developing. You can tell them to keep the ball on their head stationary and you can see how long they, they, they do that for, right? It becomes a competitive thing. It builds your skill, but you're sharing it in your virtual team building. And the second part is, you're doing your tactical planning as well, right? So how do you do the tactical planning virtually? So you actually start to make sure that you give your players specific tasks, right? So you actually make them a part of the tactical planning instead of them being a recipient of it. So you ask them to, to plan a specific tactical uh, situation with you, whether it's your right midfielder dribbling uh, on the right flank and going into position and putting a cross in, right? So you're gonna make sure that that kid understands um, what he needs to do in certain situations and then you set up a virtual exercise for him that he can do in his backyard or that he can do in his living room to actually uh, maybe do a couple of skill moves, beat the defender, get into position and put the cross in, right? And you would actually tactically start to train the kid to make sure that he or she understands what options they have in specific situations, right? So you're, if you're on the right flank, you don't have only one option, that is beating the defender, going, um, going up on the flank and then putting the cross in. You can cut inside, you can actually say, you know, you can actually assess uh, how many defenders are coming at you and if you're if you're 1v2 then, then maybe you, 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 you pass the ball back to your uh, to your teammate, right? So there's different situations that you can prepare them for tactically um, make them make them write down stuff and, and share with the team based on specific tactical situations um, and one final thing that I would definitely recommend is in that virtual team building exercise uh, once a week maybe, right? Get the whole team together and play, right? Play uh, trivia of, uh, on, on, on soccer, play, uh, uh, play different games, put them into smaller teams and, and just, uh, you know, brainstorm about things. Um, look at, you know, who's, whose favorite player did what, right? Uh, share different experiences with them as well, right? So I hope you like the concept of uh, what I'm proposing here, uh, especially in times like these, we have to understand that we may not be able to see our players uh, regularly and we have to adapt. Um, so what what, uh, what I'll do is I'll also put uh, a few links in the description of real coaches, real players actually doing some of these things. Um, there's a lot of coaches actually um, that are making sure that uh, with their team, once a week, twice a week or twice a week, they're, they're doing common exercises, that they're doing uh, common elements of, um, of tactical planning and of team building, right? So uh, look, in the link, uh, look in the description, sorry, and uh, click on whatever links you like um, and uh, leave comments and questions, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to answer. Thanks for watching, guys.